honestly, I'm not sure if you're ready for this episode because this episode is gonna make your mouth water so hard. It's gonna make you so hungry. It's gonna make you wanna book a one-way ticket to Mexico City, I swear. So grab some snacks and get ready for a street food tour right here in Mexico City with me, Eva Zubek. Vamos, let's go. Mm. 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 Oh, it's so good. Meet Rocio, my guide to the best food in town. Rocio runs her own company called Eat Like a Local, who specialize in street food tours right here in Mexico City. She describes her company as a street food tour for people who hate tours. I love her already. So Rocio, it's so great to meet you here in Mexico City. Oh, nice to meet you too. <laughs> so you run a women-only street food tour company here in Mexico City. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, of course. I created the company in 2015 because I went on a trip and I realized how horrible tourism was. I came back, I quit my job and basically I decided to create this. But then I had a really kind of bad relationship and that's when I realized how important economic independence is for women. Uh, if you have money, it's less likely that you stay in a bad situation. I promise to myself when you have more money, when this company is better, uh, this is going to be a women only and we're going to have the best wages in the whole city. And that's, that's what we have right now. And we're off to our very first spot, a super local hole in the wall which serves the ultimate street food item in Mexico, tacos. Hola! Hola. So these tacos are one of my favorite tacos. They're called tacos de guisado. Mm -hmm. It's two tacos. Tacos in Mexico are usually made by a guy, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you will see quesadillas made by a woman. Tacos are something really new in Mexico. They're not something that was existing since the beginning. They started uh, becoming popular after we started working on the street and we needed something fast to eat. Right, so, so the etiquette is just to take it, eat it with your hands, stuff it in your mouth, eat yes. it quickly. Exactly, and always your head to your taco, not a taco to the head. But the taco I'm gonna give you here is a really good taco. It's a zucchini with uh, some corn and tomato. Uh, with a little bit of avocado, like guacamole on top. Let's do this. So this is the plain taco so far. What we're going to do right now is add a little bit of sauce, a little bit of garnish. Let's make yeah. this delicious. Exactly. Can I do this? Can Ooh. I do this? Okay, one, two, three, go. <laughs> mm, so good. Everything in this taco, you can taste it. It's so fresh. The veggies are just the right amount of crunchy. And the guacamole on top is so creamy and delicious. You gotta get your hands really dirty. Like you gotta like invest your body into your food. I love that, you know? Because like often we're so disconnected from our food. We sit at a table, we're kind of like eating with a knife and fork, all like clean. But I love this. You just kind of grab the taco. And eat it. It makes the like the food experience much more intimate, carnal, like real, raw, you know? That was only the beginning. We're on our way to, well, first of all, we need to digest that taco, and then we'll be on our way to meet one of the longest standing street food vendors in the neighborhood of Condesa. Juan well, Antonio, ¿qué pasó? 36 years. Since 4 a.m., he wakes up to make these tacos. And these are called basket tacos because they're basically made on a basket. And what they do is they put the tacos with the stuffing, they fold them, and then they pile them up like a lasagna. Oh, wow. And then they pour boiling oil and chop onions, and then they seal it with plastic wraps. So they're sweaty. They sometimes they call it uh, taco sudados or sweaty tacos. They have four flavors. I like to work with an Antonio because he makes the tacos. Most of the basket tacos are made in a mass production. And then when you're in a hurry and you work two jobs and you have things to do, you come, you order three tacos, you eat and you go. Amazing. This is the sauce he makes. He makes the sauce every year, every day different. Look how beautiful Can this I is. Can I smell it? Yeah. Oh my God. Every time I smell something like this, every time you know we're walking past different street food stalls, different restaurants, and you smell all these delicious yeah. smells. You, Every oh. time that happens, my mouth is just it's watering. watering. Do you think this is spicy? Mild. Okay, but she's Mexican, so she's from here. She Never trust a Mexican. <laughs> Let's try. Mm -hmm. It's not so much like so spicy that it burns your mouth. Mm -hmm. It's spicy in the sense that it's like just really flavorful, really like powerful, really like colorful. Yeah, yeah. This is a kind of food. You remember that I told you that women make quesadillas and men make tacos? Mm -hmm. This is it. Like quesadillas have been made by women since the Aztec times. She comes from Estado de Mexico. In Estado de Mexico, most of the, the quesadillas sauce, they come from that state because they grow their stuff there. They grow the corn, they grow the stuff that they cook. So this is something that is very artisanal because everything 
is made by her. Wow. Corn is the most important thing that we have in Mexico, it's the essence of our culture. Mm -hmm. And it's literally, in the Mayan culture, the men was made out of corn. So for me, this food is very simple, mm -hmm. but it's the heart of our culture. Not tacos. Right. This. So I think, <laughs> what do you think? Grab one so you can try the flavor by itself. It's delicious. That's corn. It's more, uh, corn that became a fungus. Oh my gosh, I never knew that this existed. Is it too spicy? <laughs> Not spicy enough? Let's see. Let's see, you will find out. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Here we've got nopales, nopales. right? Nopales. Cactus. Cactus, yes. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. Yeah. So the cactus, it has like a... The texture is really cool and very different from what the kind of food that I'm used to normally because it's a little bit like um, jelly. Yeah. A little bit solid, but also quite soft, yeah. right? So you kind of feel like it's crunchy. Yeah, let's try it. Mm. It's just filled with the cactus on the inside. Absolutely amazing. So it gives it that crunchiness, that delicious, delicious crunchiness. And then when you put the spicy salsa on top, oh my gosh, it just gives it that kick, you know, that it needs. It's perfect. Next up, Rocio took me to one of the busiest markets in Mexico City, the Mercado de Jamaica. It's known as a flower market, but there's a lot of delicious treats hidden within its walls as well. A little tasting with all the oh, seasonal fruits. Look at this! This is called black zapote, it's a very special fruit. Mm, okay. And then mix it with the orange. It's like fruity pudding, Yeah, right? Mm. Then we have guava. Mm, it's so sweet. It's so fresh, absolutely delicious. Yeah. You have two kinds of mango. Mm. So juicy. Uh. Guanabana. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. This to me looks like a tiny little clementine or something yeah. like that. Oh, wow. It does feel like eating a small orange yeah. as a whole yeah. <laughs> with the skin. That's mame, it's very sweet. Wow, beautiful. That does taste like a sweet potato, but it's a fruit. You know what, the thing about the fruit from this market and the fruit that I've had in Mexico so far is that it tastes nothing like the fruit that we get in supermarkets it back home. It tastes like almost fake, right? Because yeah. it's so intense. Yes. And you're used to like this diluted flavor of the food. Exactly. Yeah. You're like, why do you add extra sugar to the fruit? Yeah. But obviously there's no extra sugar. That's yeah. just how the fruit yeah. actually tastes. Exactly. We're about to try something very local, a jicaleta. Jicaletas are an unusual combo with chunky slices of turnip dipped in sugary powder. Kind of like lollipops, but of course, with a Mexican twist. Okay, the, there's um, the Powerpuff Girls flavor. I think that's probably my yeah. favorite. Now let's take this violent red. Maracuya, passion, passion fruit. fruit. Yeah. Mango with chili. Mango and chili, good. Let's do it. Mmm, that's delicious. Mm -hmm. Sweet and juicy and fresh, right? Yeah. Kind of like a popsicle, but a little bit healthy because it's on a vegetable. Put with a lot of sugar on top, so it's like... <laughs> Cancels each other yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> Rocio saved the best for last. We're visiting a very local bar called a pulqueria. So pulque is a fermented drink made from agave sap. I think usually we had it in like big container, like one liter. So this is just for you, so you can just sip a little bit and try the flavors. And I don't know if I can handle a liter of pulque straight away. Yeah. <laughs> Salud. Salud. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's good. Who knew? Pulque is definitely one of the most unusual kinds of alcohol I've ever had anywhere in the world. And it's completely natural and unique to this country, which makes it really special. Now, I shouldn't finish all of this, even though it's not very strong, because we have another very special thing to do here in Mexico City. So I guess we better get going. That was a lot of food. I feel like I've gotten to know Mexico City on a whole new level, but it's not over yet. We have a mission. I'm about to learn how to cook traditional Mexican food. And no, it's not at the bar where you can pay with Bitcoin. That's a whole other story. We're going to a cooking school right here. Hi, Graciela. So nice hey, to meet you. How are you? <laughs> so nice to have you. I'm so glad to be here. Your studio is absolutely beautiful. It's a pleasure. Yay. So what we're going to be cooking today. A delicious taco. Graciela is an award-winning chef who now runs her very own successful cooking school in the heart of Mexico City. 
Today, she's going to teach me how to make some of Mexico's most beloved dishes, but with a twist, because I requested the all-vegan version. But please don't be put off by that. I want to show you how this food comes to life. Bueno, my dear Eva, today you'll learn how to master a very special type of tamal that is called mezcla pique. Mezcla pique. Yeah, perfect. We have here cactus paddles, carrots, beans that have been previously cooked and drained, cherry tomatoes, and tomato is native to Mexico. And we have here my favorite chili serrano. How much chili do you like? I love spicy food. So Graciela, tell me about this space, how your cooking school got started. I used to be a system engineer, a cybernetic engineering. And 12 years ago, I switched careers to cooking in order to be more time with my family. Um, and to balance my life in mm -hmm. another way. So um, I started to teach cooking classes and four years ago we were able to finally open the cooking studio. Mm -hmm. And this is it. <laughs> my intention is that in this place you can feel the love and the tradition in every item. So I try that everything here is handmade uh, or at least tells a story. It has like a craft that someone else makes it from the clay pots, from the dishes. This is why we serve in mm -hmm. this type of utensils. And even the glasses are hand blown, hand painted, and all the crafts here have, have something to tell. The humble chile is an essential ingredient in Mexican cuisine, so we're being extra generous. Don't mess with me, because you know, I know how to cook now. A tamal is a technique. It's all about hugging. You hug one side and then the other side, and then you tie the tamal. This is called totomoxle or a corn uh, husk. So what goes into a tamale? Well, juicy chunks of cactus, cherry tomatoes, courgette, beans, but really anything you have available. Graciela got me to fry up an all-vegan version of the classic al pastor. Then she got me on the tortilladora, which is a traditional tortilla press, before teaching me how to fry a tortilla. Check out this amazing table of food that we cooked up here in the last couple of hours. This is all homemade right here. So we've got beautiful tamales, we've got tortillas right here, and we're gonna be making tacos. So Graciela is gonna show us how to dress a taco the proper Mexican way. Yes, Let's so we will start with the, with the filling. Don't overdo the filling, because a lot of garnishes are coming in. Mm -hmm. Then I am gonna add a little bit of pineapple here. We do onion. Always be generous in your life, but mainly with salsas. So I am going to add a little bit of the mango sauce that we have here. Of course, cilantro leaves chopped a mm -hmm. little bit and lime. Lime is like love. We need the lime to make everything work here together. So I am going to add a good amount of lime. Salud. <laughs> Salud. <laughs> no, provecho. Okay, enjoy. Provecho. This taco is quite possibly the best taco I've ever had in my life. Not because I cooked it, <laughs> but because the flavors, like each flavor is distinctive and different and unique, and it adds up to this symphony of taste. For the tamal, never eat the leaf. Then you open and please discover the aroma of this. Mmm, amazing. Oh, lovely. I really like it. Mm -hmm. mm. So good. Everything just kind of like steamed together. Like mm -hmm. all the veggies absorb each other's flavors. Oh, this makes me so happy. This food <laughs> actually makes me really happy. It was, it was a pleasure to host you today. I really enjoy cooking with you and even with dance and singing together and spend so much fun. Yeah. And spend great. this time together. Thank you for showing me that you can always travel with your heart. That was a seriously delicious day. I mean, Mexico's food culture is so incredibly rich and diverse. I feel like I got to taste just a tiny little slice of that today, but it was enough to really fill me up. You know, the best thing about today was that all the food that you saw, and I mean 100% was all vegan. Not an ounce of any animal products, no dairy, no meat in any of it. You know what, it's just amazing to know that you can have such an awesome feast that is all plant-based and it doesn't take away from the food experience at all. Amazing, I'm so happy. I'm gonna go and digest all of this deliciousness. 
This was food in Mexico City. I'll see you in the next episode here on DW Travel.